let's tie a hinged aggravator. The inspiration for this fly comes from Burke's aggravator. I just basically articulated, substituted a couple things, um, added rubber legs, got rid of the quill. You see I'm using a wiggle shank from Flyman Fish Company and 17-aught uni thread. I've tied it, wrapped it back to about three quarters, three quarters to five eighths of an inch back from the eye of the hook. I'm going to take some sculpin olive marabou and tie it in at the back for the tail. Bring the thread forward and then trim off. Now I'm going to take some flashaboo. This is number 16. I believe it's by Uni. And it'll be my rib on the abdomen section. I'm going to create a dubbing loop that's about, oh, anyway, for four to six inches. Bring my thread up to the front, tie it off, just so it doesn't get in the way and doesn't unravel. What I'm using for dubbing is the traditional dubbing they use for Harris's mask, which, which for an aggravator is Harris's mask. Trap some of that dubbing in that loop. I really like this stuff, always have, probably always will. Got those real spiky pieces in there, long and then short soft pieces. Really looks buggy when it gets wet. Get a good spin on the dubbing, create my loop and my brush. This is one of the few times where I actually use my vise and spin, wrap the dubbing by spinning the vise. Bring it up to the front, tie it off. And whip finish it. Then I'm going to take a moment to actually trim some of those hairs around the eye because I want as much free movement and nothing blocking that eye as much as possible so that that, that abdomen can hinge or articulate in the background, in the back of the fly. And I just take my flashaboo and wrap it up to the front. I like about four or five wraps, evenly spaced wraps. Try not to tap, trap too much material. Bring up the front, tie it off. Trim off my flashaboo, and then whip finish.
and take a marker and color those those wraps that whip finish and I'm going to take a moment take my bodkin and pick out those hairs just a little bit and trim off the excess wiggle shank. Now, we're gonna tie the front end of the fly. What I have is a 2457, size 16. The bead I have on for it is a two millimeter brass bead. Sometimes I'll use tungsten, and it becomes the head of my fly. Once again, 17 Ot uni thread, I'm laying a base down from my mono eyes. Now I'm taking a 30 pound piece of mono and I have a pair of flop pliers and what I'm going to do is flatten out the middle section and the reason I flatten it out because if you tie a round thing to a round thing it's hard to keep it still but if you tie a flat thing to a round thing you've got better you've got a better chance of it staying put you see that little flattened area that's going to be my joint that could that I tie in my fly at it gives me much more surface area contact from the mono to the hook take a flame just wiggle it through the flame voila instant mono eyes Used to watch guys burn one in and burn the other and they'd never be even. I just wiggle it through there at the same time. I'm gonna figure eight to lock those eyes in. Down the line also though I'll add a little bit of super glue. See, I brought my bead up. <clears throat> now I'm going to lay a little base for my 3X tippet, which will actually become my hinge. And what I do is I take my pliers again, and I flattened out the very tip of it, and then I go back about 3 sixteenths to an eighth of an inch and make another flat. And that section in between there becomes my loop. See those two flat sections? They're going to marry up against each other and flat to flat as well as to round, pretty stable. It won't slip and it'll stay on that round hook pretty good. And tie down just a little bit. Now that first section that I tied, I'm gonna add that on through the eye. And bring the thread over. And then we're going to pull on the abdomen and so that it matches up with that other flat section. Can you see that? And then tie it down. And then as added safety, I bring the mono up to the front, under the eye, and then back over the top and lash it down. So all the pressure exerted up to the front onto the hook itself and not just onto the mono and the joint. I'm going to trim it off now. Now I take a little bit of super glue so it nails it down. See that little nose thing that I'm using? You can get that at a hobby shop. Really cheap. Half dozen for about 75 cents. And every time it clogs up, you just nip it off. Now, I've got a piece of 3 six, 
15th inch olive brown, mottled olive brown medallion sheeting. And it's gonna be my wing case. Before that though, I've got some silly legs. And they're about 7 eighths of an inch long and we tie it in that, right at that section. And I pull them to the side, wrap twice and then pull them to the side. A couple more wraps. And then I'm going to take some more of that Hair's Airs mask and split that thread and put that Hair's Airs mask dubbing in there. Now, it gets a little tricky sometimes, especially if I've been uh, drinking Mountain Dew. But see, I can break, split that thread, and sometimes tease out that loop a little bit. Didn't like it, so I tried it again. Flattening out the thread. You see, I'm rubbing it from underneath. And then using my finger, I flatten it out, and then I can see it and then poke my bodkin through it. Not quite working, so I take some more of the twist out of the thread. There, I got it that time. Take a bit of my dubbing and sneak it into there. Spin it, and then I'll create a loop, a uh, brush. All I'm doing is spinning that bobbin and just letting it rotate. I'm pulling the material back out of the way, bring up to my thread up to the front, and pull my wing case over and tie it off behind the eye of the hook. Right there, I'm tying right behind the eyes. And then I'll bring it back up to the hook again. Eye of the hook, right behind the eye of the hook. And trim off my medallion sheeting and tie off my fly. Or whip finish my fly. trim my thread. Now, there's stray hairs every once in a while that get in there. When you put UV resin in, it doesn't lay down properly, so I have to trim back to make sure it's all over the place right now. I like a clean area. What I'm doing right there is just taking a marker and making them black the eyes. And I'll take another marker and I'll color that thread. And that's what I'm doing right there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's UV resin. Now you'll see that I make sure I get on the thread and bring it all the way back as far as I can. This is the one thing about the UV resins, any of them. They don't stick to medallion sheeting really, really well. Hit it with my laser. Hardens in two seconds. That's my hinged aggravator. And do it in different colors too, olives browns, rust, but I like it in the olive and the tan or the natural hairs mask.